Hello, my name is Taylor Gottfried, and I will be presenting Stitching Together, the Experiences of Disabled Knitters. My co-authors are Kelly Mack, Catherine Lum, Evelyn Yang, Jessica Hodgins, Scott Hudson, and Jennifer Mankoff. Knitting is a craft that is hundreds of years old and can be used to create clothing or gifts, producing income as a form of self-expression, art, and as a form of physical therapy. Knitting has been studied in a variety of contexts, such as aging and reflection of craft practices, but not in terms of accessibility. Knitting is performed with tools such as knitting needles or looms. Knitted objects are composed of stitches, such as the knit or purl stitch, and knitting patterns specify stitch type and order. Below is an example of a written knitting pattern. There are a variety of digital and physical tools that exist in knitting. Examples of digital tools are Ravelry.com or Generative Design. Examples of physical tools include the various types of knitting needles or looms, tools that aid in error prevention or the execution of different stitch types, or tools that increase knitting accessibility. We interviewed 16 disabled knitters about their motivations, process, needs, and experiences of bias. We had 11 participants who were blind or low vision, seven with motor impairments, and three with cognitive impairments. We also collected data from six forums to extend our sample size and complement our interviews with more motor and cognitive related data. Interview data was open coded and the top level categories were benefits of knitting, accessibility of knitting patterns, accessibility of the knitting process, accessibility of the resulting objects, and experience of the knitting community. Knitting serves many purposes from coping with one's disability to customizing objects for accessibility. For example, participant 10 frequently knits clothing for a child with autism and says, that's the nice thing about being able to modify or make up your own patterns is that he has a lot of very specific requirements for clothing that isn't always met by being able to buy clothes. So it's nice to be able to make stuff. Pattern accessibility was also a frequent problem for disabled knitters. Forum posters mentioned over 40 different pattern formatting guidelines to make patterns more accessible. Pattern inaccessibility extended beyond participants with visual impairments. For example, participant 14 with a cognitive impairment wrote out patterns in detail and said, if it says you need to go and knit 16 rows, I'll write out all of them and then I'll mark them as I go. Four participants also reported difficulty using small gauge looms, and both circular knitting needle and loom knitters experienced difficulty executing a purl stitch. For example, participant three describes that when I purl, I have to push my thumb down like that to get tension. And so there's a lot more pinching for me, and that definitely causes discomfort the fastest. The results of knitting solved accessibility problems for some knitters as well. For example, participant 14 knits tops for wheelchair users that have a shorter back and longer front. She describes that if your sweater is too long in the back at all and it goes underneath you, it makes it hard to transfer. Participant 10 also makes patterns for toy robots with disabilities to increase the inclusion and representation of disability in the knitting community. To the right, are examples of her work and there is a robot with autism, a robot with a prosthetic, and a robot with limb difference. Participants primarily participated in communities of knitters to learn as support networks, as project collaborators, and to increase inclusion. However, bias included assumptions about ability and even concerns about image, such as one forum poster experienced when a pattern designer didn't like the idea of a wheelchair being in the shot. We also conducted an iterative design to help improve participant one's post-disability knitting experience. Challenges included tensioning, which was solved with a 3D printed system shown on the left, and needle control solved by the lap desk shown in the middle. Recommendations for future work include automated knit pattern parsing and modification to provide the expressiveness to understand, modify, and add to the diverse library of patterns found on popular knitting sites accessible pattern presentation during knitting, which a knitter could manipulate to match their preferred pattern formatting style, or smart loom or knitting needles that track a knitter's progress as they knit, and also acts as a form of error prevention. 
Once again, I would like to thank my co-authors and the funding agencies that helped fund this research. Thank you.